The season is over. It ends here at Everbank Field for the Buffalo Bills. They lose 10 to 3 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, this team went a lot farther than anyone ever imagined. Certainly this trio over here uh, finishing 9 and 7, making the playoffs, but you got the sense in a very solemn locker room that any euphoria over breaking the drought and making the playoffs, guys, uh, didn't carry the fact that, or didn't overcome the fact that the season abruptly ended for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, and after an incredible, surreal last week, reality came crashing down today in a game that seems and feels like so many others, including the Carolina game, which is exactly that game. They don't have any offense. Tyrod Taylor averages 3.2 yards a pass, and they're just not good enough. The offensive coordinator throws on first and goal at the one and gets a penalty, and they don't get a touchdown there. Their margin of error is so small offensively, it's time to move on. A new quarterback and a new coordinator and admit that you're just farther away than people want to think. And what we might have seen here, Jay, was Tyrod Taylor's final game as a Buffalo Bills quarterback. And ironically, it ends the same way as another former Bills quarterback of the Hall of Famer, Jim Kelly's career ended with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, his whole career ended with a concussion in a playoff game against Jacksonville today. Concussion for Tyrod Taylor uh, with a minute 17 left. Nathan Peterman comes in and, of course, throws the interception that ultimately ends the game. But this was a game where Buffalo's defense, while holding them to 10 points and doing as much as it could to make this winnable for, if the offense could just get into the end zone, but also allowed Blake Bortles to rush for 89 yards while throwing for 87. Yeah, it was, you know, really close to being the exact effort they needed defensively, but they just quite couldn't get it done in terms of stopping the run. And we would have thought coming in, sure, they, they would have a trouble with that because this was the number one rushing team they were going against. But it was Leonard Fournette that right. we thought was going to be doing the damage, not Blake Bortles. So, you know, the key for this defense all season long has not been yards against. It's It's been turnovers, takeaways, and they didn't get them today, and that's what they needed. And to Sully's point, they needed those takeaways to overcome the offensive deficiencies. And, it, yes, it's a heavy ask. It's a big ask uh, to hold a team to 10 points in the NFL. That's a, that's a defense doing its job. But today, I mean, Bortles put some balls up. We knew that he was going to do that, and they just couldn't make those plays when, when they had to make them. And it's not fair to hang this one on the defense. They did a pretty good job, but, yeah, there were breakdowns. And Blake Bortles, of all people, rushing for 90 yards. Uh, I mean, who would have saw that? But, yeah, that was uh, – or who would have, you know, for, forecast that? But that was the difference. I mean, that, there were some key first downs there in the second half where the defense just couldn't get off the field. And, you know, it's like I said, it's unfortunate to hang it on them, but – you know, you had, there was no margin for error with this offense. Some housekeeping, Kyle Williams, a lot of speculation that this might have been or, or is, was his final game as a Buffalo Bill. You had a chance to talk with him along with other media after the game. Yeah, no decision. He says that, you know, he is going to sit down with the organization, with his family, and he's got a lot of time. So I do not anticipate this being a, a quick decision made by Kyle Williams. His contract is, of course, up. And you can, you know, you look at the Bills' run defense, and, and it's fair to wonder, do they need an upgrade at defensive tackle. I mean, Kyle is, has been a warrior for this team, but 12 years in, do they have to get better at that position? Maybe it's the Bills suggesting that it's time to move on from Kyle Williams and not the other way around. But as of right now, Sunday afternoon, right after the game, no no decision made. And LaShawn McCoy, Sully, gaming it out on a, on a bad ankle, but still had 100 yards of total offense for the first time in the postseason, for the first time in a nine-year career, but uh, showing a, a level of toughness. Uh, another tough loss for this team, though, Micah Hyde suffering a concussion uh, in the, early in the third quarter, and that hurt the secondary. Yeah, Incognito got hurt and came back. Yeah. Uh, Tredavis White was hurt. Uh, Charles Clay got hurt. This team late it out there. They played for this coach. They're just not good enough, especially offensively. And if I'm LaShawn McCoy in my private moments, I'm like, I'm, I've spent three of my top seasons as one of the best running backs in the league with a team that stripped down its own passing game. And imagine him playing for a, for a real good offense with, with a good passing game, what, his, what he'd look like. Yeah. All right, it's over here again for the Buffalo Bills season. One thing we also have to note, they were well represented by their fan base in the stands here. Quite a few of the Bills Mafia on hand, uh, really, really trying to give their support. All right, that will do it for now. We'll have more coming up as we wrap up the season this week at One Bills Drive. For Jerry Sullivan, for Jay Skursky, for Jim McCoy, I'm Vic Carucci. Check back for more on the BN Blitz.